Welcome to the Harbinger series, where I'll be diving into the potential lore and theories revolving around the unreleased Harbingers. And today, let's talk about the fifth Harbinger, Polchinella, or the Rooster. Disclaimer, this is all just speculation and theories considering we know almost nothing about the Fatui Harbingers, Polchinella very much so the case. I could just be grasping at straws and you wouldn't know. But yeah, this is all just fun and games and speculation. Nothing here is indicative of the final product. So let's begin with his background as a character. The history of Pulcinella is one that we've actually never seen before, even with the extra material that he's been featured in. He's the fifth Fatui Harbinger, and the one that actually recruited Ajax into the fray. How he was personally recruited into the Harbingers, though, is unknown, since the Pale Flame set never covers him. But considering his physical appearance, I feel as though he's ancient. On one hand, he's one of the rarer breeds of important characters that actually look like they're aging, but on the other hand, because of his sharp ears, short stature, and questionable nose, a part of me feels hesitant to call him human. Humanoid, sure, but hardly human. So it's actually scarier to think that he could be the oldest of the old, something potentially very ancient. Or something very, very short, I don't know Genshin's races, we have dog people and cat girls. Which, while we have characters that are centuries years old despite their appearances, I do genuinely wonder if Pulcinella has the possibility of being millennia old if he was, in fact, from a race of longevity and he's old even by their standards. Personality-wise, Pulcinella as a person holds a very wise, sage-like aura, for better or for worse. His title, Mayor, is a testimony to the fact that while his authority over the Harbingers isn't as expansive, his reputation across the Fatui rankings isn't to be scoffed at. He was the one that facilitated the training of new recruits which eventually led to the recruitment of Ajax, and he was also in charge of facilitating the Chasm operations prior to their shutdown. He also wasn't above using that aura to subtly patronize others or provide words of caution, even among his fellow Harbingers. His line of dialogue regarding Tartalia as a character of great zeal but little caution, and that it would be wise to trust him but not get too attached. Something that is contradicting what Tartalia says about how Pulcinella treats him and his family. Tartalia says that Pulcinella is confusing, because while he's not sure if he can trust him, Pulcinella treats him like family and is really close to Tartalia's siblings, something that is antithetical to what Pulcinella warns about attachment. And this characteristic of him potentially bleeds into his more calculating and sinister side. Pulcinella himself is an interesting character because he teethers on the mask of compassion and unfeeling politician. When considering the Harbingers, he is mostly the one taking care of logistics and projects that require massive manpower and long dedication, but also the political affairs from the shadows. He is the one who is currently overseeing the establishment of a new Northland bank in Sumeru, and he holds the title of Mayor. The Mayor isn't something who is afraid of leaving behind assets he deems unimportant. When the Fatui soldiers in the chasm were essentially locked in there after Tartalia's expedition to Liyue caused political tensions to rise, Anton mentions that Pulcinella is not afraid of dispensing less valuable assets to assist in endeavors of greater meaning. Pulcinella's regard for those who have extinguished their use is also hardly present, as even when his fellow harbinger Senora died, he only gave half a day for Senora's funeral, something that Arlequino and Pandalone further chastise. Furthermore, Scaramouche chastises Tartaglia for allowing such vulnerability in the first place, saying that Pulcinella's goodwill is basically an underlying form of surveillance for Tartaglia's family, a subtle threat that his family is in his hands, something that I'm certain Tartaglia is already aware of considering that he's also had his own predicaments of loyalty to the Fatui, mentioning that balancing between his status as a harbinger and as a brother hasn't been the easiest. Now we move on to Pulcinella's Commedia dell'arte characterization. When characters adopt from a classical piece of literature or mythology, they usually adopt it in two ways. One is by using parallels, such as if their source material behaves a certain way, so will the character inspired by them. But another is reversal. Fascinating, right? Character writing at its finest. I say this because Pulcinella is in the same boat. He adopts, but he also subverts. The duality of Pulcinella as a character is actually something that lends very well to his Commedia dell'arte counterpart, a counterpart that is also known for its dualistic nature. The Pulcinella, or the rooster, is usually depicted with a comically pointed hat and a very large black nose, something that translates very well with the Pulcinella of Genshin. But the personality between both of them translates really strangely. 
The beauty of Pulcinella as a character is that he's depicted as an oxymoron, moron being almost kind of literal, but I digress. He can be depicted as both the noble haughty rich man or a servant. He is self-serving and self-preserving, but can sometimes be the savior of other characters, a good reflection of the Genshin counterpart's duality of being a mayor and a good colleague, versus his unrelenting in compassion for those that don't have value for him. But regardless, the Pulcinella of the Commedia is also a social climber. He is an opportunity opportunist who always sides with the winner in any situation, and fears no consequence. With his counterpart being from an organization of diplomats, this is very much replicated. He is also extremely cunning and can undoubtedly fit into any situation or role he needs to be in. Where the differences begin though is in the representation of Pulcinella being the common folk. This is actually reflective of all the Fatui Harbingers, considering each of them are affluent aristocrats and diplomats, while most Commedia dell'arte characters that are inspired by are lower people of society. Now we move on to another potential symbolism that I found very interesting. Fun fact, when looking for potential connections to Pochinella, I had to dive my toes into Slavic mythology for the first time, something that a Southeast Asian like me is horribly unfamiliar with. And because I didn't know where to start, half of my search history are the following amazingly articulated questions plugged into Google. Yes, to start any kind of research, you must first accept you have no idea what the hell you're talking about. So I'm asking if there are others who know more about this and if you could provide insight to the potential symbolism in the comments. But I found a fascinating character that may or may not have been used for Pulcinella's inspiration. Okay, not that, but the aspect of Pulcinella being somewhat sardonically being a protective figure in Tartaglia's family life is quite reminiscent of the Slavic house spirit or entity known as the Domovoi. Sources vary if that's an I or a Y, but you be my guest and is known as a protector spirit of the household. They're usually seen as short or hunched old men with long beards, but they can sometimes adopt other features. They're most especially protective of children and animals, and will even get into fights with other domovoi if the welfare of their family is threatened. Domovoi are as pleasant as their host family allows them to be. For example, they share in the emotions of the family, and are not afraid to show their more aggressive or hostile side if the family is found to be corrupted. Though, they don't always tether on complete benevolence, since meeting one can potentially mean you're nearing your imminent death. Not necessarily because of them, but because of omens. But not all signs of Domovoi are morbid, of course, since it's customary to give them offerings as gratitude for protecting the home by leaving a portion of the evening meal, or by partaking in a moment of solitary peace before going on a long journey since they don't like to be alone too much. The origin of a household's domovoi varies depending on the source I was reading. Some say that the domovoi are the dead spirits of the previous heads of the houses, carrying on the final will to protect the people from beyond the grave. Some say they're a good mix of both. But regardless, the reason I bring this up is that besides the appearance, the mere role that Polchinella has as the quote-unquote guardian protector of Tertalia's house reflects well with this symbolism. The stark difference is that Polchinella is more so a subversion of the protective spirit trope, and is further motivated by his own an agenda of holding Tartaglia's family as a bargaining chip. Maybe? That was a very big pessimistic look on him as a character. Because think of it like this, why would the Harbingers really need to do something like this against Tartaglia? Sure, maybe in the beginning it was a subtle threat, but to go the extra mile of actually taking care of them and giving them presents is unprecedented. Besides, it's not like Pulcinella's in a unique position. They could just keep Child's family under scrutiny from a distance. I'm sure they have the men and resources to do so. What's a family in Morapasok going to do when a harbinger demands their presence? It's not like they can fight, even with Tartalia's help. So it's actually more fascinating if we dissect those two possibilities instead of immediately just going for the pessimistic one. So let's go for genuine and not genuine. On one hand, I believe that Pochinella's care for Tartaglia's family was easily motivated by the need of surveillance, especially with someone both as young and as volatile as Tartaglia. Child is a family man, and while his loyalty to the Harbingers as an organization is fickle, his devotion to his family isn't. So it would be our so it would be horribly easy to keep his silence and servitude by targeting his family. But eventually, I also like to believe that Pochinella became enamored by the family in Tartaglia's role as being perhaps the youngest of the Harbingers. Maybe grandpa instincts kicked in and he does genuinely care for the family now, which is why not only he keeps his promise of keeping the family safe, which I'm sure could be done with a level of detachment if the Harbinger so chooses, but also by actually being close with the family. On the other hand, 
closeness with Ajax's family has a deeper level of surveillance that station guards or thin threats can't find. Now that Pochinella is a valued member of the family, he is more privy to hearing stories about child's past or he even influences his family's perception of the Fatui. For example, a child is oftentimes the easiest to coerce for information, and child's letters to his family can be sources of valuable and maybe even detrimental information about his endeavors in other nations. It's a good thing to point out that Tartaglia does talk about the Traveler extensively as evidenced by Tuzer knowing and trusting the Traveler when they first met. And I'm sure that the information hidden behind these letters can sometimes be more valuable than mission reports. It's also beneficial to earn the trust of the adults in child's life, especially the ones who were originally against his joining of the Fatui. And again, it's also just a better idea to have child on your good side instead of your bad side, especially if you need a pawn or you need someone to do your dirty work for you. Tertalia has continuously been a good asset to the Fatui despite his status being the lowest amongst the Harbingers. The unspoken rule of the land is that the characters featured in the Devot trailer cutscenes are the playable character teasers for each region, and there hasn't been much evidence that suggests otherwise since we've been following a pretty good pattern. Pochinella being featured for Snezhnaya is a good argument for his playability. He does seem to at least be the more amicable one that is already close with another playable character we have. We've also seen that thumbnails and arts from these trailers are subjected to change, which was actually a very big problem that some people were saying for Pulcinella because he has Fatui soldiers featured in his. But Sino's updated splash art shows us that everything after Ayaka is now tentative art. So that begs the question, if Pulcinella is playable, what would the logistics be? Well, the first is that this is a very unorthodox character model that we've never seen before, even now with two years of Genshin Impact. Tiny male characters aren't a thing yet in the game, and while I find Hoyo will have them by Fontaine or Natlin, I'm getting a bit pessimistic. I don't know if they'll boost his status to short male model, which would be terrifying in its own right, or do something a bit more creative with his design. The second one is the story beats. The current playable Fatui characters we have are hardly loyal to the cause, which makes them more palatable for a general audience. This is actually one of the reasons that it was required narratively for Scaramouche to completely erase the background of himself being a Fatui harbinger, or else we'll have a lot of logistical problems there. You know, like being hunted down. The problem is that while someone like Pochinella would be easy to have playable because of his good standing with Tartaglia, his status as an active diplomat could contrast heavily with Genshin's more family friendly commodifications of their characters. Still, we don't know much about Pochinella in general, so to say that he fits Genshin's usual criteria for playability is really impossible to tell. And that's it for me today, a shorter video. Oh, and I wanted to say this, you know how he has a mayor title? I was actually confused what that means because mayor is hardly used in my country, but when I googled it, I found something on Wikipedia called the mayor of Moscow. I'll just read this verbatim. The mayor of Moscow is the head and the highest ranking official of Moscow, who leads the government of Moscow, the main executive body of the city. I don't know how true this is, but if it is, does that mean Pulcinella is the public political figurehead of the Fatui in Snezhnaya? Kind of like the necessary face of diplomatic power while the other harbingers are much more discreet with their operations. And being an executive head of a city is also scary though, so, you know. Ugh. Anyway, bye bye